Hey, pilot. Train man here, and today I'm excited to show you guys how to connect your ELRS on your tiny whoops, your micros, your nanos, your Emaxes, your little guys, your nano hawks, baby hawks, tiny hawks, doesn't matter. You have or want to run Express LRS on your little guy that has it built in. I'm going to show you how to do it quick, fast, and easy. Let's go. All right, pilots, so here's the deal. A lot of these quadcopters, little guys, tiny whoops, micro whoops, nano whoops, even little micros like this will have a flight controller or an all-in-one flight controller ESE with a built-in Express LRS receiver. How cool. And that makes it so exciting because those receivers can go so much further and are so much better with so much less telemetry loss and this and that. They're just better all around. So it is so cool that they are built in and we can do what we do without all the BS. Here's the catch. It is not like binding a normal Express LRS receiver. So I have a full video on how to set up and bind and flash your radio and do all you need to do on Express LRS, but your WHOOP drones that have a built-in SPI receiver are just not the same. So we're gonna take a few simple steps. I'm gonna show you the three ways that you can do it. Use the one that's best for you. The first way is super fast and easy. The second way, super fast and easy. The third way is a little bit longer, but it is by far the better method because you're using your binding phrase. And if you know anything about Express LRS, there is a binding phrase, which is a choice of words or symbols or letters that you choose and put on your receiver and on your radio. And it allows the two to communicate. And what makes that so beautiful is I can put my phrase on this one, this one, this one, and this one, and just power up any one of them at any given time. And it will work with any of my radios or any of my external modules in the back of my radios. How cool is that? The first thing you need to do is find out if it is actually an SPI receiver. The way to do that is you're going to take your quadcopter and you're going to take your plug to your PC and you're going to jump into beta flight. So let's go ahead and plug it in. So once we're jumped into beta flight, all you're going to do is quickly click on receiver. That is your receivers tab. You're gonna notice right here where it says receiver, it says SBI RX. Well, there you go. That is Express LRS SBI style. What is SBI? Well, SBI is just a short way of saying serial peripheral interface. <laughs> All that means is that it is connected on a ground level. You have your microprocessor, your microcontroller that is on board communicating to everything on the board. Boop, 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 boop. Well, if it's SPI, it is directly connected to one of the legs on that microprocessor and they are communicating back and forth quick and fast like. As opposed to a different type like a separate receiver, right? Like this Crossfire receiver will be connected through UART. That's an RX and a TX and it is not SPI. That is the difference. One is built into the hardware and why this is important, which I'm going to quickly show you how to do, is you will have to flash a different way. With a normal Express LRS receiver, we just simply jump into the Express LRS configurator. We compile all of our features, our settings. We type in our binding phrase. We hit build. We take that. We flash it via Wi-Fi right onto the receiver and we're good to go. You cannot do that with an SPI receiver because it is on board. Sorry. If you are quick, fast, and in a hurry and want to get out, I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. You can do it the fast way. There's two fast ways to do this. Option one, from this same page, and if you don't know how we got here from the setup page when you first plug in, as you can see, my quad is connected and working. You're going to click on receiver. Grab your... Ugh, your radio, and if you haven't flashed your radio yet, you're gonna to need to do that. You can follow the video that I put down in the video description, but don't follow the receiver portion of that because it won't work for you. You're gonna power up your radio. Welcome to the HTX. And Switch what we're gonna do is we are gonna simply run our Lewis script, and we're gonna do that by going into system. We're gonna scroll down to ELRS. We're gonna click on that. And there you go, you can see everything happening, right? All we're gonna do is head down to bind. We're gonna click bind, and as you see, it says binding. 
during that binding moment, we are going to take our quadcopter and we are going to click on this button right here that you see that says bind receiver. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to bind this method, but that is option one. Put the radio in bind, click bind, yeehaw, you're done. If you don't want to do it the difficult way or set it up the proper way and be thorough with your binding phrase and all that other stuff, you're good to go, get out of here. Now, if you tried that and maybe it didn't work for you, there's a couple other steps we can take. So let's go ahead and jump into the CLI. That is where we can communicate directly with the flight controller via commands. Okay, so the second method to quickly bind, let's just say you didn't have the bind receiver option or you tried it and it did not work. Your second option, if you're quick, fast, and in a hurry, jump down here to the command line and you are going to type bind underscore rx press enter, put your radio in bind like I just showed you through the Lua script, the two shall connect, ooh, don't do that, the two shall connect, and now you will be bound and ready to roll, all right? And you can confirm, you'll jump into your receivers tab, and you would move your sticks around, and you could see them moving around, and you will still leave this SPI Express LRS. All right, all right, pilots, so those were the two quick ways to get it done. Now, let's do it a little bit longer, but a lot a bit better. And that is by using our binding phrase, because when we do that, that is gonna mean that this is gonna just play well with everything else. So, like we discussed, when you have an SBI receiver on board, you can't use the Express LRS configurator to build and compile and flash it that way. We'll need to flash through Betaflight as long as it's a beta flight board. So we're gonna go ahead and do that together. So plug in your quadcopter. So now that we're connected, we're gonna head up here where it says update firmware. As you'll see, it's kind of already put together some stuff, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna click show release candidates. From there, we are going to press auto detect it is going to select the firmware that belongs to this flight controller. And what you're gonna notice is up here, our existing target is an X1280, and the new target that it's recommending to us is also an X1280. And that is a formatical way, I don't know the reason or the science behind it, but that is what is confirming and letting us know that inside of this firmware is compiled all of the Express LRS telemetry, communication, coding, all that stuff is on there that is going to make this flight controller SPI with Express LRS. Very cool stuff. Way above my pay grade, but very, very cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and flash, but we'll need to pick a release. I am going to click on release and release candidate. I am happy with 4.4.2. That just dropped literally <laughs> yesterday. Let's go. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit load firmware online. That is going to pull it off of the internet and put it into my beta flight, which you'll need to make sure that you are connected to Wi-Fi in order for this to work. And then I'm going to go ahead and click flash firmware. Okay, we had no response from the bootloader. Well, that's not cool. All right, what do we do, Drain Man? Okay, no big deal. Hit connect, jump into the CLI. From here, where it says write your command, we're going to simply press BL, bootloader, and we're going to press enter. And as you'll see, my flight controller just restarted. If I look up in the top right-hand corner, it says DFU STM32 bootloader, which is what we needed because we had no response from the DFU. We're going to hit update firmware. We're back to where we were. Let's make sure we're where we need to be, right? 4.4.2, June 1st, 2023, X1280. I like it. I love it. Everything is great. Load firmware online and flash firmware, baby. As you can see, it's erasing and we are flashing. You don't necessarily have to do this, but the reason why I'm doing this is because, well, you're gonna see, but we need 4.4 in order for me to show you, and we had on here 4.3 beta flight, so now we're about to have 4.4, and you're gonna like what you're about to see, baby, yeah. Bam, programming successful, let's go, let's go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit connect, we need to apply our custom defaults. Bingity boom, hit close. We want to calibrate our accelerometer. I always do this, so get your quad nice and level and calibrate. And you don't have to do that, but now you'll see. I mean, I do it, so I recommend doing it, but 
I don't think it's mandatory. All right, what we're gonna do now is we need to put together our binding phrase. So let's head over to the CLI. We're gonna type in get express, and if I press enter, you'll notice that up here are UID, and that's short for something, I'm sure, but to me and you, what UID means is binding phrase in numerical values, right? So instead of A, B, C, D, it's one, two, three, four, okay? Right now we are at zero, 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 which isn't any good. So what you can do and what most people will do is they will jump up here into expresslrs.org. Boom, and from here we can go to search. We're gonna type in S-P-I-R-E, oh, there it is right there. You're gonna select SBI receivers, and I will put a link to this exact page down in the video description, just in case I'm going a little too fast. Let's go ahead and head on down, and what you're gonna notice right here, watch how cool. We have a UID byte generator. This is super exciting, so watch this. My binding phrase is, hey, pilots. All right, how cool is that? So what we need is for it to generate mine. Come on, what are you doing? Let's try going back. Okay, we might need to refresh this page. There we go. So it is, hey, <laughs> pilots. So my UID is 205 98 129 76 69 239. It is a value of six because that is the array that the CLI was calling for and that's just how it communicates, don't ask me why. But there you go. So I can press this little copy deal right here or to make your life even easier, just below that, Express LRS, thank you by the way, has set up your exact CLI command. So what you'll do is you'll copy this, and again, you have that little tab right here, you can just press that, press right, right click, copy, or you can highlight it and press Control C. If you're on a Mac, I think it's Command C, or Apple C, or whatever it may be. Then we're gonna jump back into Betaflight, and right here in the command line, you can press Control V, and then all I have to do is press Enter, and then I'm gonna type Save, and I'm gonna press Enter. My binding phrase is now gonna be on here, but don't do this, don't do this yet, because we just flashed our receiver, and I wanna show you something so cool, because now that we are at Betaflight 4.4, Point two, which is anything above 4.4, watch this. We're gonna go ahead and get out of the CLI, disconnect. And as you notice, I didn't press enter, so follow along with me, are you ready? We're gonna jump over to the receivers tab. We're gonna uh, select our receiver because we need our flight controller to know, because we flashed, that we are on an SPI receiver. We are going to select Express LRS. We'll save and reboot. And now when I come back in and I go back to the receivers tab, what do you see right here? Shout out Express and shout out Betaflight. How cool. So now my binding phrase building for my UID byte generator, I don't have to go into any websites and I'll put it for you in case you want to do it that way or maybe you didn't follow all the way through so you didn't get to see this. But you went ahead and just did it right through here. So watch me now. My binding phrase, hey, <laughs> pilots. And as you can see, it is the same 205, 98, 129, 76, 69, 239. So I don't even have to go to the CLI. So now I'm gonna hit save and reboot. I haven't turned on my radio, not once. I mean, for the new way of doing this. And if you have a Mobula, a Beetle, a, a, any, of the, any of these things, any of them, Beta FPVs, whatever they are, as long as it has an SPI built-in receiver, you can do this. But let's go ahead together and just have a little fun. You ready? Welcome to HTX. Okay, I powered up. RF signal critical. And what do we got right here? We got full bars. I know it said our critical, whatever, but I don't know why it said that. Don't listen to that. 
Look at these bars. I am literally connected. All I did was hit save and reboot and I am connected. So now let's go ahead and confirm how I showed you. We're going to head over to the receivers tab and <laughs> everything is connected and working. So all I got to do now is go into modes. I'm going to hit add range. I'm going to set my arming switch. And what else do we want? I mean, it's a whoop. So maybe we want some angle. Maybe we want some horizon, right? So I like to set that on this one. So uh, if it's all the way on, we're going to go angle. If we're here, we're horizon. If we're here, we are off. And that's all on aux 7. And the final last thing I want is I want some uh, flip over after crash. No flip over after crash, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to hit save, and it's because only certain ESC protocols can do that. So we're going to head over to, we're going to go to motors, and right here our ESC motor features are disabled, and that's why that wasn't working. So we want to go ahead and jump into, uh, like, let's say D-Shot 600, and I can now hit save and reboot, and now it is rebooting. Okay, it did that because it rebooted because I've been holding a strong signal this whole time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back into modes, and what you're going to notice now is flip over after crash is right here. I'll set my switch, and I have now all my settings, all my modes. I am, I mean, ready to rock and roll. So I hope that your pilots learned something awesome. I hope that you'll use this the next time that you get a whoop. You'll just go ahead and flash to the newest firmware and set up your binding phrase because now I can, I am, not to make this any longer, but I am running my internal module. So this, this, this radio has built in Express LRS, but as you'll notice in the back, I have my access flying. That is an external module. Watch this. I'm going to go ahead and select models. I'm going to run my external. So when I hit select model, you're going to see this is going to power up now. See it powering up? Watch how cool. So I've booted that up. Now watch this. I'm going to repower my receiver and bam. What do you know? Here I am on quad external, and that's just the name that I gave it so I know if I'm running my module or if I'm running my actual radio. But as you can see, I am again connected whether I want to go super long range and run my module, if I just want to use my radio, if I connect this guy, that guy, it doesn't matter. It's got my binding phrase on it, which makes it so powerful and so easy to use. I just freaking love it. Just kidding. All right, pilots, I hope that this has been extremely helpful and useful to you. I hope that you will use this yourself. If you know somebody who is struggling with this, feel free to share this video to them. I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did, and I will see you on the next one.